Dear students, in this module, I'm going to talk about the Chow Fassman algorithm through a flowchart. Using Chow Fassman algorithm, you can predict the secondary structures that can be formed by a sequence of amino acids that is in a protein. Specifically, there are some amino acids which prefer to form alpha helices, while others they prefer to form beta sheets, while some others they tend to form loops and beta turns. So in this module, I'm going to focus on the, uh, on the flowchart for beta sheets using Chow Fassman algorithm. So let's start. Towards evaluating the formation of beta sheets from amino acid residues in the protein sequence, first you need to scan the entire sequence. So let's start. You take an amino acid sequence, and for you, I'm quoting an example sequence here on the right side. So by scanning the amino acid sequence, I mean that you have to start from the left side and go towards the end of the sequence like that. Okay, so if you meet four amino acids out of any six that have a propensity for alpha helix greater than one, that is, let's take these six amino acids. And if the propensity of four of them, any four, is greater than one for alpha helices here, so in that case, you need to evaluate them for forming an alpha helix. But before you go for that, if that is not the case, but three out of five amino acids, have a propensity for forming a beta sheet that is greater than one, then you may actually want to evaluate them for beta sheets. So although you have evaluated four out of six amino acids for formation of the alpha helix, which resulted in a no, then you went on to evaluate three out of five amino acids by looking at their propensity for forming a beta sheet to be over 1. Next, if that is the case and you are successful in finding 3 out of 5 amino acids that have a propensity for forming a beta sheet to be greater than 1, then you can extend the beta sheet like that. You have to increment at each step by 1 amino acid here one at a time and next you evaluate the amino acid after that. Now if that is the case and you find more amino acids which have a propensity for forming a beta sheet to be greater than one, you continue the formation of beta sheet until you find four contiguous amino acids which have a propensity for forming beta sheets to be less than one, that is four consecutive. Contiguous is very important here. It means consecutive. So four consecutive amino acids, if you encounter them, which have a propensity, average propensity for forming a beta sheet to be less than one, in that case, you have to calculate the propensity for alpha helix for those as well which you have already calculated here, and you compare them. So if the propensity for forming a beta sheet is still greater than the propensity for forming an alpha helix, in that case, the region is labeled permanently as a beta sheet. Important point here is that these propensity tables are available, and you have to look at the propensity for each amino acid very carefully as well as you have to consider whether they are contiguous as is the case here or a generalization is made out of a bigger amino acid sequence like that. Okay, so once you have finalized the entire beta sheet, then you see if you have more sequence or not. So if it's the end of the sequence, then you of course stop, but if not, then you continue this cycle like that. 
So in this way, you can evaluate all beta sheets and you can arrive at the structure, that portion of the structure which is formed by beta sheets. So in conclusion, beta sheets can be formed by amino acids by looking at the algorithm and therefore you can construct the beta sheets, beta strands by using chow fassmann algorithm. Next is the alpha helices and loops and we'll look at them in the later modules.